जय गोपी जना वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यमुन तीरावन चारी यमुन तीरावन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यमुन तीरावन चारी यमुन तीरावन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु पदा जय जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद प्रभु पद जय जय प्रभु पद
Shila Prabhupad ki jai, Granthara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Okay. Please repeat. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. We'll do this together. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Shaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayet. This is the very means of conquest. Nashta Prayesha Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshirun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Born in the darkest of frictions and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch light of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. So for those of us who were, who were there a couple of days back, right? Or three days back when Maharaj was giving the class, he gave a pretty good detail on what, what this verse means. So we'll continue uh, with our reading from Canto 3 and this is uh, oops, chapter 18. We're going to complete the chapter today. We completed till text 12 yesterday. We'll start from text 13 and go all the way to the end of the chapter. And, uh, and our focus was today is 22 and 23. So can somebody start us off with translation for Text 13. Sri Maitreya said, The demon, being thus challenged by the personality of Godhead, became angry and agitated, and he trembled in anger like a challenged cobra. Yeah, oh, for, before we get into the act. So we are going to get into the action part now. <laughs> you know, this is one of my most favorite chapters, actually. This can be made into an action movie, this, this chapter itself. So what's happening here? Who, who's there and why is the Lord being angered? Why is the Lord angry, I should say? Can you, can you use the mic? Because he's uh, fighting with Hiranyaksha. Yeah, he's fighting with Hiranyaksha. He's, the fight has not yet started. But then the trash talk has already happened. <laughs> he, you know, the Hiranyaksha is basically saying, you amphibious beast to the Lord. And he feels very pained by it. You know, it's, we saw it in yesterday. And yesterday, uh, we were reading during the uh, Bhagavad Gita class in the evening, uh, chapter 12. And uh, Krishna is describing uh, the qualities of his devotee. And he says, such people are very dear to me. This is the last few verses of the 12th chapter. And one of the uh, uh, qualities that was mentioned was painless. But the Lord feels pain <laughs> in, in this, uh, when, when Hiranyaksha was uh, 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 calling him like that as an amphibious beast. Why do you think? The, the Lord basically says the devotee is painless. You know, one of the qualities that he says, but yet the Lord seems to feel pain when he was called you amphibious beast. It's not a very nice way of calling the Lord. You know, it was very uh, derogatory, but yet he's, he felt pain. Do you think, why? Why? I was actually thinking about this. Why does the Lord feel pain? The origin of the Yes. Supreme Lord, sorry. Yeah. So all of us are sentient and therefore uh, these qualities come. Yes. 
because devotee carries the Lord in the heart. So Tirtha Kurvanti Tirthane. So that's what whenever devotee is having any pain, Lord feels the pain. Yeah, but in this case it was not the case, right? In in this case it specifically said he was feeling painful when he was being called like that by Hiranyaksha. Yes, Nanda Braja Prabhu. The Lord actually loves everyone. He loves everyone, even the demons. He will fight them. Yeah. He will he will play that wonderful part of the greatest destroyer of demons. Yes. But he loves everyone. Yes. And so when they say something, it's hurt. But he'll stand up and do his duty, right? To show yes. us what to, to yes. do. Yes. This is, this is what um, the Acharyas say. Is that the Lord is, um, uh, takes great care of his devotees. You know? And Hiranyaksha was actually Jaya. Uh, he, he was a very uh, close devotee of the Lord. And now to see him actually say this, uh, the Lord felt very painful. <laughs> You know, that's what uh, they say. And the Lord is a person. He has his feelings like uh, Gokulan and the Prabhu was saying. So, and then they're getting ready for the battle. Then the, the Lord is angered and then Hiranyaksha is angered. And then uh, now we're going to see uh, what happens. We're going to get a blow-by-blow -blow account of how the fight happened. <laughs> hissing, <coughs> hissing indignantly, all his senses shaken by wrath, the demon quickly sprang upon the Lord and dealt him a blow with his powerful mace. Yeah, one thing I would request uh, you guys is to when you're reading it, imagine it. <laughs> imagine Hiranyaksha having a huge mace. These are gigantic personalities, right? Varahadev um, uh, is as huge. When he came out of the nostril, how big was Varahadev? Yeah, it was the upper part of the thumb. That's what it says. Just this much, not even the entire thumb. Just the upper part of the thumb. And then he started becoming huge. And Hiranyaksha is as huge. That's why he's... So they are two big personalities on the Garba Ocean. You know, having two maces and all these things. You know, imagine it. Text 15. The Lord, however, by moving slightly aside, dodged the, viol the violent mace blow aimed at his breast by the enemy, just as an accomplished yogi would elude death. Yeah. The personality of God had now exhibited, exhibited his anger and rushed to meet the demon, who beat his lip in rage, took up his maze again and began to repeatedly brandish, brandish it about. Yeah. Now the Lord is giving back the blows. Then with his mace, the Lord struck the enemy on the right of his brow. But since the demon was expert in fighting, O gentle Vidura, he protected himself by a maneuver of his own mace. Can you see this? The Lord coming to hit the right of the bro and Hiranyaksha is <laughs> blocking him with the, <laughs> with the mace. Okay. In this way, the demon, Haraksha, and the Lord, the personality of Godhead, struck each other with their huge maces, each enraged in seeking his own victory. Yeah, Prabhupada says Haryaksha is another name of Hiranyaksha. It's the same person who is being, dis de being described. Okay. There was keen rivalry between the two combatants. Both had sustained injuries on their, on their bodies from the blows of each other's pointed maces. And each grew more and more engaged at the smell of the blood on his, on his person. <coughs> In their eagerness to win, they perform maneuvers of various kinds, and their contests look like an encounter between two forceful bulls for sake of the, for sake of a cow. Yeah. So it, there are two ways. This is Srimad Bhagavatam is poetry. No. So one is the literal representation of how you think about it. Think about these two bulls that are fiercely fighting against each other for the cow. But what is the cow here? Poetry always has different layers of meanings, right? One is how you actually see it. But here, who is the cow? Yeah, Mother Earth, right? So Mother Earth, okay, continue. O descendant of Kuru, Brahma, the most independent demigod of the universe, accompanied by his followers, came to see the terrible fight for the sake of the world between the demon and the personality of Godhead, who appeared in the form of a boar. Yeah. Uh, 21, we are on 21. Just afraid to do anything with this. Okay. 
after arriving at the palace place of uh, come back brahma the leader of the thousands of sages and transcendentalist saw the dema who had attained such unprecedented power that uh, no one could fight with him brahma then addressed narayan who was assumed the form of the boar for the first time yeah so we've seen this before uh, we've discussed this before that everything that the lord does is uh, for his pleasure now this is basically what leela means it's so that he can have some fun and specifically in this case uh, krishna wants to have a good fight and hiranyaksha has to be so powerful so that krishna can actually have a good fight you know this demon was no ordinary demon hiranyaksha he was a very very powerful person that's what uh, the bhagavatam says right it's such unprecedented power Uh, that no one could fight with him this was the nature and you can see that the lord is actually having a good fight right? in in the descriptions that we've seen he is completely engrossed in the fight and we'll see what lord brahma is going to say but he is really into it he's he's enjoying uh, the fight okay text 22 23 we'll read the translation and then finish and come back lord brahma said my dear lord this demon has proved to be a constant pin prick to the demigods the brahmanas the cows and innocent persons who are spotless and always dependent upon worshiping your lotus feet he has become a source of fear by unnecessarily harassing them since he has attained a boon from me he has become a demon always searching for a proper competent competent wandering all over the universe for this infamous purpose yeah okay we'll come back to this verse text 24 lord brahma continued my dear lord there is no need to play with this serpentine demon who is always very skilled in conjuring tricks and is arrogant self sufficient and most wicked brahma continued my dear lord you are infallible please kill this sinful demon before the demonic hour arrives and he presents another formidable approach favorable to him you can kill him by your eternal potency without doubt yeah you see what's happening hiranyaksha has been harassing all these people and krishna is really having a nice fight and he's enjoying it <laughs> that's what blood brahma is saying you're so engrossed in it but it's time to finish off you know it's like we they everybody's terrified of this personality and now brahma is coming to remind krishna that i know you're enjoying this but now it's time to finish him off because you see even uh, when krishna is there krishna is personally present here lord varaha dev right still lord brahma is saying uh, saying uh, the time is going to come this demonic hour is going to come where he can become really more powerful think about it uh, i was thinking about yesterday now we had the eclipse uh, it's considered very very inauspicious and uh, even krishna here uh, Kr- krishna is the representation of time in this material world right and there are some auspicious times some inauspicious times and it's all uh, dictated by krishna himself and here krishna himself we will see will acquiesce to what lord brahma is saying uh, that it doesn't matter what time of the hour it is because it's krishna himself Uh, but still he uh, respects the rules that he has put in in this material world if there is a time that is inauspicious where the demons may, might become powerful in krishna's case it's not really nobody can become powerful than him but he still respects it hmm? so as devotees we should try to this is what i was thinking we should try to respect the rules that krishna has put in this world as much as possible try not to go just against it for the sake of doing it okay krishna will protect his devotees definitely but there are some really you know auspicious times that are there in this world so we should probably respect it because krishna himself is doing that here yeah, in this verse we'll see in the next three, three verses uh, my lord the dar- darkest evening which covers the world is fast approaching since you are the soul of all souls kindly kill him and win victory for the demigods yeah the spirit a species period known as abhijit which is most opportune for victory commenced at midday and has all but passed 
Therefore, in the interest of your friends, please dispose of this formidable foe quickly. Yeah. Again, we see this point that Lord Brahma is making. Right? One is the non-species time. Here he is giving the opposite of it. That this time is conducive, really conducive for doing good things. Krishna, it's almost going to pass. <laughs> so you please take advantage of this time and finish him off, he's saying. For Krishna, it doesn't really matter. Does it matter? Absolutely doesn't matter what time. But still, you will see that Krishna is, will listen to Lord Brahma because this is his uh, energy. Na? It's, he, is, he has to play by the rules of what he has set up. This demon, luckily for us, has come of his own accord to you. His death or, or ordained by you. Therefore, exhibiting your ways, kill him in the duel and establish the worlds, the worlds in peace. Yeah. <laughs> You really see how uh, horrific Hiranyaksha was. You know, Brahma has to basically urge uh, Lord Varahadev four or five times to say, please kill him. <laughs> please, please kill him. <laughs> Don't leave him alone. He's basically been terrorizing the world, uh, this, this Hiranyaksha. And especially, uh, let's go to the verse and then uh, we'll come back. This is text 22, 23. This is the focus verse for today. So we'll read the translation. Brahma Vacha Eshate Deva Devanam Angri Mulam Upe Yusham Vipranam Saurabhe Yinam Bhutanam Apyanagasam Agas krid bhaya krid dush krid. Has a nice ring to it, no? What do, what do they call this in English? Uh, allegorical? No. They have the same thing going in a poetry. There's a word for it. Anyway. Hmm? Alliteration. Yeah. The same kind of. Uh, yeah. Asma dhradha varo sura. Anveshan aprathirato Lokan atati kantaka Brahma vacha Eshate deva deva nam Angri mulam upe yusham Vipranam saurabheyinam Bhutanam apyanagasam Agas krid bhaya krid dush krid Asmad radha varo sura Anveshan aprathirato Lokan Atati Kantaka. Somebody wants to chant? Brahma Vacha. Ishate Deva Devanam. Angri Mulam Upeyusham. Vipranam saurabheyinam Bhutanam apyanagasam Agaskrit bhayakrit dushkrit Asmad radha varo suraha Anveshan apratirato Lokan Atati Kantaka. So this is poetry and this is what people who are expert at music can do. It's actually read the poetry and bring the actual mood of <laughs> what Rama is saying. Thank you, Gokulanda Prabhu. That was so sweet. Uh, somebody else wants to read? Brahma Vacha Eshate Deva Devanam 
ಹಂಗ್ರೀಮೂಲಂ ಉಪೇಯುಷಾಂ ವಿಭ್ರಾಂ ಸೌರಭೇಯೀನ ಭೂತಾಪ್ಯನಾಘಸ ಆಗತ ಭಯಕೃತ್ ದುಷ್ಕೃತ್ ಅಸ್ಮ್ರಾಧವರೋಸುರ ಅನ್ವೇಷಾನ್ಪ್ರತಿರಥೋ ಲೋಕಾನ್ ಅಟತಿ ಕಂಟಕ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಉಚ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸೆಡ್ ಏಷ ದಿಸ್ ಡೀಮನ್ ತೇ ಯಾರ್ ದೇವ ಓ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ದೇವಾಂ to the demigods angri moolam your feet upeyusham to those having obtained vipranam to the brahmanas saurabheinam to the cows bhutanam to ordinary living entities api also anagasam innocent aghakrit an offender bhayakrit a source of fear dushkrit wrong doer asmat from me radha varah having attained the boon asura a demon ಅನ್ವೇಷನ್ ಸರ್ಚಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ರತಿರಥ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ನೋ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಕಂಬ್ಯಾಟೆಂಟ್ ಲೋಕಾನ್ ಆಲ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಅಟಥಿ ಹಿ ವಾಂಡರ್ಸ್ ಕಂಟಕ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಅ ಪಿನ್ ಪ್ರಿಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಭ್ರಮ ಸೆಡ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ this demon has proved to be a constant pin prick to the demigods the brahmanas the cows and innocent persons who are spotless and always dependent upon worshiping your lotus feet he has become a source of fear by unnecessarily harassing them since he has attained a boon from me he has become a demon always searching for a proper combatant wandering all over the universe for this infamous purpose somebody wants to read the purport There are two classes of living entities. One is called Sura, or the demigods, and the other is Asura, or the demons. Demons are generally fond of worshipping the demigods. Huh? Demon, demons, are, okay, and there are evidence that by such worship they, are, they get extensive power for their sense gratification. This later proves to be a cause of trouble to the brahmanas. demigods and other innocent living entities demons habitually find fault with the demigods brahmanas and innocent to whom they are a constant source of fear the way of the demon is to take power from the demigods and then tease the demigods themselves there is an instance of a great devotee of the lord shiva uh, of lord shiva who obtained a boon from the lord shiva that the head of whomever he touched with his hand would come off its trunk as soon as a boon was offered to him the demon wanted to touch the very head of lord shiva that is their way the devotees of the supreme person of godhead do not however ask any favor for sense gratification even if they are offered liberation they refuse it they are happy to simply engage simply engaging in the transcendental loving service of the lord yeah so here we see uh, what hiranyaksha was actually doing you know uh, so usually when uh, people are demonic people even might excuse them if they're actually being demonic to people who are also nasty here you see what brahma is lord brahma is saying that he's been harassing the demigods the brahmanas the cows and the innocent who are what is the word that he's using 
in his description he is actually describing these four people right in his verse who is spotless he says so this hiranyaksha is harassing these people for no reason they have not done not done anything to him they have been spotless in the sense they have been minding their own business doing their own thing and yet uh, he, his mentality was such that he was going to going and harassing people who had nothing to do with uh, with him now uh, this is how hiranya hiranyaksha was actually behaving uh, because uh, like the verse says hiranyaksha was worshiping lord brahma also like we have seen this that hiranyakashipu was doing this we'll see that in the seventh canto you know he was performing incredible austerities and so much austerities that hiranyakashipu was uh, performing that fire started coming out of his head and you know how powerful this fire was yeah this fire was so powerful that it was not like the matchstick <laughs> or it was not even like a bonfire it was so powerful that the entire universe was feeling the heat the entire universe was feeling the heat how is this possible um, and there is there is another example also in the fourth canto when uh, Dhruva Maharaj actually starts performing his penance you know he, this is the small boy five year old boy who is being uh, angered by his stepmother and then he goes to the forest and said i want a kingdom that's bigger than my great grandfather his great grandfather was brahma himself he he is basically the king of the entire universe no he said i want a kingdom that's even bigger than that and then he starts performing austerities incredible austerities and at the end of 6 months he sees the lord hmm? just before he sees the lord he is standing on his one toe hmm? one toe and then uh, performing his uh, meditation and then at one point the bhagavatam describes that he closes all the holes of his body he is closing this one person is closing the holes of his body and yet the bhagavatam describes the entire world is feeling suffocated so this is this is why the demigods are afraid you know it's not that their powers are there just for them actually it is possible for each one of us if we actually uh, practice yoga really hard that we can actually take up the position of a demigod even when they have that position we see so many examples of it in the bhagavatam like hiranyakashipu taking ownership of the entire element of fire like dhruva maharaj taking the ent entire element of air you know the entire world is feeling suffocated and this is little bit sophisticated but all of us when we are born in this world actually associate ourselves with all the elements of this world hmm? our asso association extends only to this body right all, this body is made up of all the elements that krishna says right bhumi rapo nala vayu kham mano buddhi revacha that earth water fire air ether mind intelligence and ego these are all different elements uh, that we've seen that when during the creation these elements are there and we start associating with these elements to create this body that we have and that's how we we're able to sustain in this body but if you actually perform yoga you can actually associate with the complete element itself <laughs> that is why the demigods are very fearful that their power can easily be usurped that when one instance when they are not being worshiped they get really touchy about it the the, the residents of vrindavan have been worshiping indra for many many generations and one instance and indra is really afraid that his powers can be taken away you know so the hiranya hiranyaksha has actually been doing this he has actually been taking over uh, the demigods the brahmanas the cows and the innocent people and we, we there is this prayer you know namo brahmanya devaya go brahmana hitaya cha jagat ditaya krishnaya govindaya namo namaha this is a prayer that we offer to krishna and there it is described that the brahmanas and the cows are very very dear to krishna go brahmana and it's in fact in that order and it was interesting to me where the order here was the reverse you know the cows come the uh, innocent the cows come and then before that the brahmanas come but the prayer basically says go brahmana hitaya cha because of what prabhupada is saying here uh, there are two kinds of people what are the two kinds of people that prabhupada is saying here in this purport yeah the demons and the demigods and what's the differentiating factor between them Uh, Nanda Prabhu Prabhu was little bit confused also when he was reading it. Huh? The demons worship the demigods? <laughs> so, so what is the differentiating factor that Prabhupada is mentioning here? Anybody? When a devotee worships the Lord, he doesn't ask for um, boons and things like this. He just wants a 
unalloyed devotional service. Yes. When um, these Asuras worship the demigods, they get a boon from the demigods, and then they enact um, <laughs> harm on the demigods, like that one uh, that got a boon from Shiva, and then tried to use that boon on Shiva himself. Yeah, it's amazing. So basically, two, two three things here, right? That's prophecy. The demons and demigods, uh, just from these purport, the demons are worshipping the demigods. But whereas the devotees are worshipping Krishna himself, the supreme personality of Godhead. Two, the demons want something from the demigods. That's why they are worshipping. It's not that they have incredible attachment to the demigod, that they love this person, that they are actually worshipping this person. They really want something for themselves. So they are, they are worshipping the demigod. And whereas the devotee, in contrast, is worshipping uh, Krishna, but wants absolutely nothing from him. This is his nature. The, the only reason why he is worshipping is because he loves the Lord. And third, <laughs> the demons, after getting something from the demigods, actually cause harm to the demigods. Whereas the devotee wants nothing from the Lord. And the Lord is saying, no, 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 you take this. You take liberation also. But what is the reaction of a devotee? No, 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 Krishna. I don't even want liberation. This is what he's saying. Prabhupada is saying, right? He, uh, the devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead do not, however, ask any favor for sense gratification. They themselves do not ask for anything. And even if they are offered liberation, they refuse it. It's, it's so stark, right? In this one purport, Prabhupada is giving so many different con co contrasts of these two different kinds of people. And you see, this is what Hiranyaksha did. That he took this boon from Lord Brahma and started humiliating everybody, harassing everybody. And this example that... Uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada gives in this example, uh, in this purport is that of uh, Vrik Vrikasura, I think, Vrikasura. This is the, there is this demon that's described in the, in the, in the Krishna book, in the 10th in the canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's incredible to even imagine, right, the, the demons are so uh, determined in their purpose that the austerities that they perform are incredible. If devotees can actually perform <laughs> a fraction of the austerities that the demons are performing, you know, we, we could probably achieve love of, love of God at probably in this lifetime so easily. But you can see the determination that the demons have in, in completely going for what they want. They, they're full on in, in their purpose. But their purpose is not so amazing. <laughs> their purpose is that they want to get the, all these powers and use it for their own sake. So there is this demon called Vrikasura. That he's performing incredible austerities, so much austerities that he's been performing for such a long time, and then uh, the, he's been performing austerities for Lord Shiva to please Lord Shiva. That's who he is propitiating. And then Lord Shiva has not appeared for a long time, and then he's cutting off his limbs one by one, saying, "Oh, you're not there, uh, but what's the use?" So then, at one point, he's so close to cutting off his head that Lord Shiva actually appears, and he's very pleased by him and said, "Okay, you've performed so much austerities." Uh, what do you want? You could ask so many different things to Lord Shiva. Uh, Lord Shiva is said to be the topmost of uh, all devotees. Vaishnavanam Yatashambo. You know, you could basically ask him for pure devotional service and you could actually get it. <laughs> but what does this demon ask? He says, anybody that I put my hand on, their head should fall off their body. That's basically his uh, uh, wish that he's asking. Look at it. This is the purpose. That they want to just achieve incredible power and this mentality that they want to be gods, they want to be uh, the controllers of everybody, this is there. This is there in all of us, no? But the Bhagavatam gives us stark examples of such people. But all these qualities is there within all of us also. That's why we are there in this material world, right? Krishna says three things that, by which we can be peaceful. This is Krishna's peace formula in the Gita. Does anybody know what Krishna's peace formula is? This is the most famous peace formula. We're saying we need the United Nations and all so many things. Yeah, Bhoktaram, Yajna Tapasam, Sarvaloka Maheshwaram, Surdam Sarvabhutanam, Jnatvamam, Shantim Ruchiti. Krishna says, one who knows these three things will actually attain peace, Arjuna, he says. Bhoktaram, Yajna Tapasam, that I am the enjoyer of uh, all the sacrifices and austerities. I here is Krishna, <laughs> not us. But we think we are the enjoyers of all the austerities and penances. No, these demons and... Uh, uh, they go and perform so much austerities and they get their results and they think it is for them to enjoy. And the way they enjoy is by harassing people. Th that's what we see in this world. When people 
attain incredible power, what happens? They very rarely use it in the right sense. No? So, so this demon, Vrikasura, then got, gets this boon from Lord Shiva and then immediately tries to touch, his own, touch Lord Shiva's head from whom he's actually got the boon, to test the boon. <laughs> He's had so much faith in Lord Shiva that he'll give him his boon, but he has no faith in the words that Lord Shiva just told him, that you have this boon, but he wants to test it out. I want to make sure what you said is true or not. <laughs> this is his mentality, you know, and then he tries to put his hand on Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva is running here and there, and he actually goes to the spiritual world and then meets Lord uh, Vishnu and says, please protect me, you know. And then Lord Vishnu comes, and then you see, this is, uh, we, we think we can cheat God. You know, we can do something or the other. This is what Hiranyaksha's twin brother would try to do. They, practically both of these brothers, they wanted to be uh, eternal. Uh, they wanted this boon where they would never die. So they, they, they were doing all these things to somehow trick Lord Brahma into getting this wish. You know, but you see how intelligent uh, Krishna can be. So, so like that, Lord Shiva goes to Shweta Dvipa, it says, where Lord Krishna is there. And then he says, can you please protect me? And then he comes in the form of a Brahmana, uh, a Brahmana boy. And when Vrikasura sees this Brahmana boy, he's completely uh, enamored by this Brahmana boy. He's incredibly attached because it's Krishna himself. Who, is, who can be more beautiful than Krishna? Krishna literally means all attractive. No? Krishna is so attractive that even the demons are attracted by Krishna. And then he says, Okay, instead of testing it on somebody else, why don't you test it on yourself first to see if it actually works? You know, instead you have to go and search for people, try to put it on them, it's too much work for you. Why don't you just put it on your own head? <laughs> and this demon stupidly tries to put, put his hand on his own head and then uh, his, his head, head falls off. But you see, this is... Uh, huh? <laughs> But, but <clears throat> this is uh, the, uh, the, the demonic nature, you know, that, that uh, comes out very starkly in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But we can see that in, in, the, in the different yugas, right, in the different cycles of time, in Satyuga, this is the beginning of time itself, right? Brahma is creating and then he wants to start creating more bodies because these living entities want to enjoy by themselves and Brahma has to start creating bodies. And when he's trying to create bodies, what does he, what, has, what happens? <laughs> the place where he has to create bodies is not there. Mother Bhumi is not there. <laughs> you know, Hiranyaksha has actually put her, put her in, in the Garba Ocean. So, uh, so we have this uh, uh, tendency that we, we, so anyway, in the beginning of time, Satya Yuga, you can actually see in the Bhagavatam that the demonic qualities were so stark that you can actually clearly see. They were very visible in Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu. These were big demons. And as the time passes, it says it, you, you start having degradation. You know, in, in Treta Yuga, when Lord Ramachandra was there, Ravana was still very powerful. He, he was no ordinary demon, but not anywhere close to how Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu were. It is said that when Hiranyakashipu would move his eyebrow, the enti entire world would tremble. That's how powerful Hiranyakashipu was. The demonic powers were reducing. Uh, it was very hard to figure out who was a demon and who was a demigod uh, in, in, in Treta Yuga. Ravana, would, but still he was very powerful. You could still figure things out. And then in Dwapar Yuga, you see the Kauravas and so many demonic kings, nowhere close to even being as powerful as Ravana, but the numbers increased. You know, it was not just this one incredibly powerful demon or a few powerful demons, but an incredible number of powerful de uh, po demons, but were not as powerful. But it is said in Kali Yuga, these demonic qualities are present in every single one of us, each and every single one of us. It's not just a very separate thing anymore. We all have these demonic qualities within us. This tendency to neglect Krishna, uh, it's, it's very actually uh, sobering. When you go on the altar in the morning, you say these mantras called the Bhuta Shuddhi mantras, where you're actually purifying your, uh, your body and mind, you know, before you, you set a proper mood before you actually start worshipping the Lord. And it says that we've been inimical towards the Lord from time immemorial. Huh? You know what inimical means? What does inimical mean? Inimical means we've never really considered this person. You, you treat them as a wall, basically. This person is here, but I really don't treat, think that you are here. I don't even recognize you. I'm so inimical towards you. 
Uh, that I'm going about doing my business, not even recognizing you. That's what we've all been doing in this world. That we've been neglecting Krishna. Here it's a very stark way where Kiranyaksha ha wants to really kill the Lord. But all of us in our own ways have been trying to do that in this material world. You know. So in Kali Yuga, you have this combination of demonic and de uh, 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 good qualities within each one of us. And uh, you have this famous thing, right? You, you, f you, you grow the dog that you feed. <laughs> you know, you, you, we all have these demonic tendencies and if we start feeding these demonic tendencies, the demonic tendencies start coming, uh, coming out. But all of us also have these wonderful uh, godly tendencies because that's our own nature. You know, we are, as servants of Krishna, we want to serve Krishna. When we start feeding that hmm, by regular attendance in the Srimad Bhagavatam class, that's what we are doing. We are trying to feed to that nature of us uh, that is godly in nature. And we are constantly starting to do that, then we can actually come to this point that Prabhupada is describing in this purport, that we are constantly worshipping Krishna, we want nothing from him, and even if he gives us liberation, we'll come to this point where we really don't even want that from Krishna, and say, Krishna, only thing I want is to just worship you, constantly serve you. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, right? Aslishya vapad ratam pinashtumam adarshanan marmahatam karotuva yatha tathava vidadhatu lampato mat prananathas tu sayevanapara. Krishna, you can do anything with me. You can embrace me or you can crush me at your feet. You know? And you, can, you don't come near me also. You adarshanan, you, you, you're not even appearing in front of me. And you're practically killing me by doing that, you know, marmahatam karotuva. But yatha tathava vidadhatu lampato. Krishna, you can do whatever you want for me. You will always be the Lord of my heart. Mat prananathas to say evanapara. This is what happens. This is the position that we, ca we can come to that Prabhupada is describing here through the process of bhakti. Slowly but gradually. So do you have any questions? Comments? Yes, Gokulananda Prabhu. Can you please pass, pass the mic? When you said there are demons, the kind of austerities they do, you know, if, if only devotees also you, could, you know, if, if only devotees also could perform, you know, sort of those austerities in Krishna consciousness, that would have yes. happened. I was thinking, it's so easy, even today's demons, right? And as you said, in Kali Yuga, the demons are there in our hearts. So when it comes down to forgetting Krishna and enjoying sense gratification, uh, all of us, not just non-devotees, you know, they can go to any extent, any yes. extent, right, working like an ash, as Srila Prabhupada says, or simple thing as watching TV, you know, it doesn't need any, uh, we are taught focus, yeah. eight hours, ten hours, people can keep on watching, and if they have to watch movies, they can get into line, especially in countries like India, right? <laughs> mm, they are willing to spend hours, they are willing to do that penance, Yes. You know, to enjoy all four sense gratification. Yeah. So that's the challenge here. So when, when here the focus of the devotees is not the sense gratification, it's giving pleasure to Krishna. It's exactly opposite. Yes. So it's like swimming against the current, yes. powerful current. Yes. That's why it's so difficult. So very well said. A little bit of, you know, austerities. Uh, when applied in Krishna consciousness to please the devotees, that is the success. Yes. Yes, thank you, Prabhu. When you were saying that, I was also remembering <coughs> what Brahma is saying here, right? That the Brahmanas are very dear to Krishna. Why? These qualities that Krishna describes in the Gita, right? What are the qualities of a Brahmana by which they work? Hmm? He, he says specific six qualities, not, not these, of course these are also qualities of the Brahman. Shamo, Dhamas, Tapas, Shaucham, Shantum, Arjava, Mevacha, Jnanam, Vigyanam, Astikyam, Brahma, Karma, Svabhavajam, Krishna says. These are the six qualities by which a Brahmana works, one of which is Tapa, <laughs> austerities. The Brahmana is willing to do it, you know. Uh, the Brahmana is peaceful, Shama, is self-control, Dhamma. Thapa, he is ready to perform austerities. Shaucham, he is very clean, both internally and externally. Shantim, he is very tolerant. Because the nature of this world, right, if you have to be, you have to tolerate your uh, <laughs> sense, senses, the urges of your senses. Shamodamas, Thapa, Shatam, Shantim, Arjavam, he is uh, honest, thoroughly honest. Evacha, Jnanam, Vigyanam, he is knowledgeable and he has wisdom. 
these are the uh, qualities by which a brahmana actually works and that's why he's very dear to krishna you know he's very religious and astikyam jnanam vigyanam astikyam he follows the religious principles very strictly very thoroughly and of course what to th- talk about a vaishnava who is much higher than a brahmana but the brahmanas are no less because they are working on such incredible principles you know that's why they are very dear to krishna and of course the cow is so in uh, like you see in the, the gourds and leela right when the cows are so innocent uh, they're just running towards krishna they, they don't nobody else krishna you protect me uh, this is why uh, krishna is also called uh, bhakta vatsala you know the love that the cow has its has for its calf is considered one of the sh- deepest of loves that you can see in this world this this is called vatsalya that's why krishna is called bhakta vatsala that he is so looking after us like that that he is ready to do anything for us he is ready to do what brahma is asking him to do think about it in this section <laughs> krishna time doesn't matter <laughs> he can enjoy that's why this entire material world is created and that's why hiranyaksha is presently present because he wants to have a good fight and yet when lord brahma comes and says please finish him off now right stay and then he says he is willing to take give away his ecstasies where he's fully engrossed in his fight to just we'll see all it takes is just one blow <laughs> this is this entire chapter is is a description of the fight but all it will take is one blow for hiranyaksha and then he dies so this is krishna he is setting his example okay did you have anything to say bro oh no you're just having a mic yeah no i thought you had the mic and you wanted to say something <clears throat> okay we'll stop here then if there are no more questions or comments yeah grantaraj shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shila prabhupad ki jai vancha kalpatarubhyasya kripa sindubhya eva cha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha anta koti vaishnav vrind ki jai